Hey everybody, welcome back to another reaction video and I continue to welcome your comments, your questions, your suggestions. So if you have an idea for a reaction video you'd like to see me take on, uh, just use the comment section below or you can send it to me over on Discord on the Vlogging Through History channel. Uh, but we're going to take a look today at a uh, channel called Top Lists, and they have something called 10 Things You Probably Didn't Know About the American Civil War. And like most of these reactions, I have not watched this yet, so I really don't know what any of these 10 are going to be, but it'll be fun to kind of dissect them. So let's dive in. That's true. Some people these days believe Abraham Lincoln, 16th president of the United States, was a hero for his time because of his anti-slavery stance. This is not entirely true. Lincoln denied being an abolitionist and believed black slaves to be racially inferior. During the great debates of 1858, slavery was discussed. Lincoln said, I will say them that I am not, nor ever have been, in favor of bringing about in any way True. the social and political equality of the whites and black races, and that the white man is to have the superior position. It's possible that he said these things for the sake of political expediency, but still, what a nasty man. All right, so I don't know if that's the end of this one or not, but yeah, I guess it is. All right, so let's talk about this for a, se a second. This is all true. Abraham Lincoln was, by today's standards, a white supremacist. So were 95% of the people living in the world um, that were not, or the 95% of the white people. I'm not excusing Lincoln's view. Uh, I'm saying it's really, really dangerous to start viewing people through the lens of today. I think even people from 20 or 30 years ago fail in a lot of ways. We've come a long way. It doesn't excuse Lincoln's views, uh, but they were pretty much what most people in the North felt. Even the people who were fighting to uh, free the slaves didn't necessarily all agree that they should have equality. Now, that was Lincoln's view pre-war. I think by the end of the war, he was starting to change on that. Lincoln tried really hard during the Civil War uh, in the process of trying to free the slaves to look at alternatives to them staying in the country because he knew that blacks and whites were never really going to see each other as equals. Uh, so he, he looked at ideas of continuing the exodus of sending former slaves to Liberia in Africa. They looked at Central America as a possibility. Um, Lincoln just didn't think that former slaves were ever going to be on the same footing as whites, and so he just thought it was best if they separated. Uh, so yeah, that's all true about Lincoln. I wouldn't say he was a nasty man because of it. Uh, I would definitely not go that far. But he was a product of his time, and he viewed uh, the slaves the same way that a lot of people did. Not everybody uh, was like some of the more radical abolitionists, uh, some of the people in Congress, uh, like Thaddeus Stevens, who wanted to push for full equality. But that's eventually what happened, and, and folks like Ulysses S. Grant helped make that happen. Yep. The first deaths in the American Civil War were accidents. The Confederates fired over 4,000 shells at Fort Sumter. The Union forces decided to surrender and saluted by firing 50 of their cannons. They killed one of their own men. Unfortunately, during the ceremony, two Union two. soldiers blew themselves up. As for the men in gray, during the Battle of Chancellorsville in 1863, the troops decided to fire their weapons into the dead of night. Due to poor visibility, they ended up killing General Jackson, also raining. their ally. A bit of caution would have been helpful. Now, that is true in every war throughout history. If you look at the numbers, uh, wars like World War One, World War II, Vietnam, Korea, the numbers are like typically 10 to 20 percent of war casualties are friendly fire. I had a cousin, uh, my closest relative who was killed in World War II was killed by friendly fire. He was in a trench and they called in artillery on a German position and it f fell too short and killed him and wounded several men in his, uh, in his platoon. Uh, so this is not unique to the American Civil War. This has always happened. And, you know, uh, James Longstreet was also severely wounded in 1864, also by friendly fire. There's a good chance that when Albert Sidney Johnston was killed at the Battle of Shiloh, that he was killed by friendly fire. So three of the highest ranking Confederate officers who were either killed or wounded during the war it happened by friendly fire. That was very, very common in war. I wouldn't say that. If you were injured on the battlefield, you were in for a world of hurt. Gunshot wounds were prone to gangrene infections. 
The only known cure was to cut off any infected limbs as quickly as possible. The top brass could do it in half a minute. Some doctors jabbed their fingers into gunshot wounds and pushed lodged bullets out of any nearby exits, then felt for any broken bones. Most had little to no experience or training. Anesthetic was not mandatory, though there were times when patients died via overdose. Strangely hmm. enough, roughly three in four soldiers survived the gruesome and painful amputation procedure, which was a notably higher rate than civilians. Only half of them survived. So, uh, again, that that's not unique to the Civil War. Uh, the issue in the Civil War was that you had, um, s you had a low-velocity, soft lead bullet. And so when it hit the body, it typically didn't pass cleanly through. Like today, you have a full metal jacket um, ammunition, and it goes right through you. And, you know, it might cause some damage on the way out, but... Uh, it would pass through like a, uh, you know, today, like it would today. But back then, so you had these soft metal bullets that they would just flatten when they hit the body, and they would just tumble inside the body. They would shatter bones, and and so there was really no way to repair those wounds uh, in the extremities, uh, and there was no antiseptic to be able to try and clean the wounds, and uh, so there was really no choice but to amputate. It really was uh, the most effective and, and the the best way to try and save people's lives. Yeah. Well, urine has nitrate in it. One of the ingredients for gunpowder is nitrate. It was discovered that urine contained this chemical, yet collecting large quantities proved difficult. Initially, the Confederates ended up trying to collect lumps of urine-soaked earth from barns and smokehouses. Mining officer John Harrelson of Selma, Alabama, published an advert in a newspaper requesting the women of the town yep. to save their chamber pots so that their tinkle can be collected in a barrel for the war. Definitely warrant. true, and that happened Army everywhere. Army poets got creative and decided to write poems to the tune of Maryland, My Maryland. Confederate poets shunned the idea. An unknown figure wrote a few additional tongue-in-cheek verses dubbed the Yankee view of it, which protested that there was found in this compound one serious objection. No soldier boy could sniff it without having an erection. Oh my god. Even during wartime, what? soldiers still had a sense of humor. A naughty one at that. Yeah, the one that was amputated. General Thomas Stonewall Jackson was a bit of a celebrity during his time. Before he joined the Confederate Army, he was beloved by black slaves for his firm but friendly attitude toward them. He stood his ground like a stone wall as he called in reinforcements during the hectic First Battle of Bull Run on July 21st, 1861, hence the nickname. In 1863, a large-scale battle took place. Stonewall was accidentally shot by his allies, and he was sent to the hospital. While everyone else's limbs were tossed into a pile outside, Jackson's left arm was buried in its own personal grave outside of Elwood Manor, Virginia. Stonewall died of pneumonia a week later, but was buried in Lexington, about 500 miles away from his amputated limb. A year later... All right, let's talk for a second about this because Lexington is not 500 miles away from where his limb was buried. I'm going to go check right now because I bet you it's less than 100 miles. All right, so it's by road from Chancellorsville to Lexington, 123 miles. So by air, probably about 100. Um, but let's go ahead and finish what he has to say and then I'll offer my thoughts on this. Union soldiers recovered the arm and reburied it in a location that remains unknown to this day. I don't, I don't know if that's true, and here's why. Because uh, I remember reading that I think sometime during the First World War, there were some uh, U.S. Army units doing some maneuvers in the Chancellorsville battlefield area, uh, and they came across the, the place where you can visit the, the marker today for the burial of Stonewall Jackson's arm. I've been there. I was there when I was 13, and um, the, the commanding officer in the area didn't believe that Jackson's arm was really buried there, so they dug it up, and it was there. Uh, so I'm not sure I, I buy this idea that, and I've never heard this before, that the Union soldiers dug it up and reburied it somewhere unknown. Still, the grave remains intact, and its tombstone is engraved with the simple message, Arm of Stonewall Jackson. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about Jackson um, because he, he kind of implies that Jackson was a beloved and popular figure before the war, too. And that may have been true with some of his slaves, but that was absolutely not true at Virginia Military Institute where Jackson was a professor, the one that everybody hoped they didn't get. And even early on in the war, 
Uh, he was not viewed highly by his soldiers. They didn't really respect him until they started to win on the battlefield, and then that started to change. And uh, I can see where he's going with this next one, talking about Jackson's idiosyncrasies. He was definitely a hypochondriac. Stonewall was an odd one. He loved to walk around raising his finger to the sky since he thought one of his arms and legs were bigger and heavier than the other. So by raising his finger, he would balance his blood flow, thus alleviating said limbs. Funnily enough, during the first battle of Bull yep, Run, he got shot it in is the said hand. that while he was raising his finger on horseback, it was hit by shrapnel. Doctors wanted to amputate the finger, but Stonewall turned down the offer. Thankfully, it healed without infection. Perhaps the he Oh. And he saw Jackson's finger and thought he was gloating like, I bet you Yankees can't hit my finger from all the way over there. So uh, if I understand the story right, Jackson went to see the, the doctor and the doctor actually turned around to grab what he needed to to amputate the finger. And Jackson just took off and said, no, thank you. But yeah, that's all true. He also sucked on lemons. Uh, he didn't have any chairs in his house. Uh, at least not for himself, because he thought that sitting, actually, uh, his organs didn't sit the right way uh, inside of his body when he did that. He had a lot of really strange habits like that. Yep, Battle of the Crater, 1864. The Battle of the Crater was arguably the most embarrassing event to have taken place during the American yep. Civil War. On paper, the plan sounded devious enough. Dig a mine underneath the Confederates, detonate some explosives, and blast them to kingdom come. The blast killed 200 enemies and left a massive crater, but the Union soldiers foolishly climbed inside of it. The Confederates arrived and picked them off like fish in a barrel. Thankfully, the troops of the North had reinforcements that counterattacked the preoccupied Southerners, but the casualties spoke for themselves. Almost 3,800 Union soldiers were killed, captured, or otherwise, compared to the 1,500 on the Confederate side. General U oh. Ulysses Grant called it one of the most depressing events in the war. Too right. So here's what happened. Uh, first of all, this was not the first time the Union did this. Grant had used the same strategy at Vicksburg. They had dug a mine, used some uh, soldiers who were miners, and there were entire uh, companies of soldiers who were all coal miners. And uh, so he, he dug under the Confederates, and it was a smaller explosion than the one that they used at Petersburg. Uh, and they were actually, when Vicksburg surrendered, in the process of doing a bunch more of these mines, it would have been much bigger. Uh, and it was moderately successful at Vicksburg. So he uses it again at Fredericksburg, and it would have worked brilliantly, except that at the last minute, uh, they switched the division that was going to lead the attack. There was a division, uh, an all-black division uh, of soldiers, I think under Ferrero, who had been specifically trained for this assault and were ready to go. And at the last minute, for political reasons, they decided to change it. And it wasn't Grant. I think it was Meade and maybe Burnside who made the decision. And, uh, and, and they switch it to a division under uh, Ledley, who was completely incompetent and had no business in command uh, and was getting drunk while he sent his division in. Uh, and it was Ledley's division that goes right down into the crater instead of going around it uh, and exploiting that attack. It was quite possible that had they sent the African-American division instead, that they could have broken Petersburg that day and could have ended the war several months early. I'm not familiar with this Sometimes story. Sometimes it's best to put on a brave face when the odds are unanimously against you. Corporal Thomas Galway of the Federal Army did just that, and not only did he survive the encounter, he also captured 50 enemy troops. During the Battle of Gettysburg, Galway was bruised and battered and limped his way to the retreating enemy. Despite being a very vulnerable target, he rounded up 50 enemy soldiers and took them back to base to become prisoners of war. Astonishingly, Galway was only 15 years old. I don't know that story. One of the strangest mysteries to have taken place in the American Civil War was during the Battle of Shiloh. As the injured lied in the fields en masse, their wounds started to glow in the dark and, later, healed considerably faster than everyone else's. Soldiers called this freaky sight Angel's Glow. This phenomenon was debunked in 2002 by William Martin and Jonathan Curtio, two teenagers researching ideas for their science school project. They discovered it was caused by a bacteria yep. called Photohabdus luminescence. 
body heat would have normally killed it, but since the battle took place on a cool day, the microorganisms landed on the wounds and ended up devouring the bad bacteria. Mm -hmm. Those healed by the angel's glow caught hypothermia instead. Bit of a double-edged sword, but it must have been quite a mesmerizing sight at the time. Yeah, for sure. Contrary to what you've likely been taught in school, the Civil War did not decisively end after the famous Battle of Apotomox mm, Court. It really House. did, though. In actuality, the Confederate surrender was a rather messy and slow affair, as Confederate President Jefferson Davis wasn't captured until a month after General Lee and the Army of Virginia surrendered. Ironically, the Confederates actually won the last battle of the Civil War, which took place near Brownsville, Texas, even after most of the states and armies loyal to the Confederacy had already surrendered months prior. In fact, the last major Confederate Stand force to yep. surrender was an Indian one, led by Cherokee Brigadier General Stand Waity. President Johnson actually formally declared the end of the American Civil War on August 20th, 1866. Unfortunately, due to his assassination, President Lincoln, who had pursued the war against the Confederacy for four grueling years, did not live to see the end of hostilities and the restoration of the Union. So, yeah, it, it, so what he says there is, is I guess, somewhat true, uh, that there was... Uh, that wasn't the decisive end to the war, but the fact is that uh, once Lee surrendered, there were no more major battles in the war, and, it, and everybody understood at that point it was a foregone conclusion. But let me know your thoughts about this top 10 uh, and about things that you think are interesting that maybe few people know about the American Civil War. Use that comment section below. Please hit that like button, and if you haven't already done so, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss another video. Thanks for watching.